by the Spirit. Lord, it be, we know, Father, that you give it, and it will be living and active, Lord. So let it be living and active in our spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Morning, guys. Morning. So, have we all done our exercise this morning? Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna actually we're gonna we're gonna carry on that theme with a little bit of a general quiz. General knowledge. Now I know we've got some experts in the room. We've got uh, Howard into the walking dictionary. <laughs> We've actually got words to look at. So we know we've got Rod, who's a bit of an expert in it too. Where's Eastwood? Um, she's also an expert in, in general knowledge. In, so, anybody know what the word, um, or is it a word, conniption means? <laughs> is it a word? Yes. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it God's perfect timing that burns his not here to defend herself? <laughs> See these words that give us help. Or you can fight back. So uh, it's great that she's in the in the uh, in another room because God protects. Anyone know what it means? No? No. It's like a tizzy fit or going around. Throwing your toys out the cot. Throwing your toys out the cot, all those sort of things. Get, get yourself in a real wound up state. Okay, so now we've got that one. What about if I said to you that you were curmudgeonly? Oh well. Oh, you know that one. So it's a word. Yeah. Um, what does it mean? It's like me. No, it's not like you. <laughs> it's actually it's actually a phrase that they get the grumpy old man from. <laughs> and and they get into rages and they go around negative, negative thinking, curmudgeonly. But the good news for you, Roger, and for us, it's actually not limited to the male. So it could be a grumpy old woman too. So we're all right. So we're all right there, huh? <laughs> and those two are intrinsically linked. Anyone know what intrinsic means? Like linked. But what does this one mean? Um, ornithology. Good. <laughs> ah, that's confusing. So we're gonna we're not gonna do an ornithology lesson, if I can say it right. To get the teeth in. But we are going to look at um, one of the birds that is my favourite animal anyway, whether it be a bird or whatever, is the eagle. Is the eagle. So we're going to, and if it's, let's say the name eagle, what, bring, what words do you get? What words do you think of when you hear the word eagle? Yeah. Interesting, the world has taken it on to use it as symbols, use it on their national flags, and you get the you get the three main ones of power, strength, and freedom. But God uses it 28 times in the Bible to refer to himself or to refer to the things that we are or we should be. And I think um, we're going to have a look at two of those verses because they encompass so much more than just those three meanings. And actually, we want to look at it in the way that God wants to. Because if he's mentioned it 28 times in the Bible as the way that we, he is and the way that we should be, then it's going to be very useful to us. In fact, it's a very pertinent, there's another one thing. It's a very pertinent word for me because I have it everywhere. And I've looked at the eagles for years, in fact, decades. Not only do I have books, not only do I have posters of them, not only do they have verses of them, I even went to go and see them. I watch videos. That sounds a bit sad, doesn't it, actually? But actually it's not. Because God put them on my heart because in times that we're going to need to, we're going to need something that we would envisage what he's doing for us and that how we should be. And so many times I've pictured the eagle and the way that I should be in many circumstances. So it's actually a verse also, or word, or a picture that we're going to get that we're going to need in the forthcoming period of time. And you're going to find out why. So it's really important, I believe, that God's giving us this message about the eagle of how he is and how we should be with this coming period of time. So let's have a look at the first verse. So the first verse we got, everybody knows that well, is in Isaiah 40, 31. 
You love this one, don't you? But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Beautiful. Do you have a word in there? So we're going to look at many words. More than the three that the world uses. Because we're going to need all of them. And these two verses that I'm going to use, this being one of them, encompasses all that he wants to say today. That first verse in there, where it says those who hope. That word hope actually means wait or to wait. And that word means eagerly anticipates, awaits expectantly, has a certain hope. It's not a word that's in, in action. It's not like you don't do anything. It means that you're waiting patiently and eagerly anticipating for God. It is most certainly not sitting on the sofa doing nothing. It's an active word, not an inactive. I'm going to see what that means in a minute. The best example I gave of that was some guy, you may have heard me use this, but it's a really good one, where he asked me to pray that he got a job. And so we prayed. And we heard from the Lord, and he said, yeah, he will... He will get a job. He's been trying for two years. This is back in England, quite a few years ago. And we prayed, and we sat, and we heard God speak and said that He would He would be His provider, and that He would provide. So I went back to see Him the next time, and He said, uh, "I've given up on God." He says, "You've you've prayed. God's my provider, and I've done this, and, and I've, got, I've received nothing." So I asked him, well, where, do you, where did you try? What, what have you done? Nothing. <laughs> I've, I've, I've done what you said. I've, I've sat waiting for God. So he did absolutely nothing. Sometimes we have a part to play, I said. Maybe you should try you know, putting your CV out or trying on jobs. Maybe you should get off the sofa and do your part so that God, the door that you're knocking on, God will open it. So I went back to see him another time. He wasn't in. But then I got a, a, an email from him saying that he still hadn't received a job and he needs a full-time one, not a part-time one. Can you keep on praying? So he carried on praying. The next time I finally saw him, a few months after, I knocked on his door and he wasn't in. And one of the guys who he was staying with said, oh no, he works now. And he'd actually received a job for 10 hours a week. But he felt that was from God after what he heard him say, and he's now working full time at the Sainsbury's job that he was given. So I learned, and he learned, that actually there's always a part for us to play, however small that may be. Sometimes it's something physical we should do, or sometimes it's just to stand. Sometimes it's to do what we're going to hear tonight, which means waiting patiently, eagerly, anticipating expectant that God is going to act on your behalf. That's, that's not doing anything. That's actively. That's actively waiting for God to act. And what, what, what happens during that time? Well, the word there is going to renew our strength. That word renew means an exchange is going to happen. A transfer is going to happen. Beautiful, this word. It means that when you wait expectantly in faith, and in trust what God has told you to do, an exchange happens from where you go from a place of weakness and without to a place of strength and within. Isn't the word beautiful? Is it God's word? When we say you're free, it's not positive thinking that sets you free. It's the truth that sets you free. And it's his word that sets you free. So an exchange goes on. That when you wait patiently, when you eagerly anticipate what God's going to do, which is an act of faith, an exchange goes on where you start to move in strength and in power. And even better, that in other verses, in other, um, other areas of, of that translation, it says that they mount up on wings like eagles. And what it means, that one, is, is that there's a transfer from weakness to strength 
And that strength is for you to overcome. So the word there is, when we wait expectantly, when we eagerly anticipate, God does an exchange in our hearts and in the heavenlies, and we move from weakness to strength, and we're able to overcome. Amen. Anytime you want to say hallelujah to that, you can. This is God's word given to you. Isn't that beautiful? So we know to overcome. And that word, as one of my favorites, is it means that we are more than overcomers. Romans says that we are therefore overcomers, but we are more than conquerors. Which means that also we are all victorious. We are all conquering. We are unrivaled, unequaled. Un we are relentless, unstoppable, supernatural forces of God. Amen. Amen. Do you like that, Jody? Do you think that's nice for me to give you? You think that'll lift you? That's the truth that sets us free. That's God's word to us saying that's who we are. Very often I go, I go into a room and people will say, how are you? I say, I'm fantastic. Say to yourself, how, how are you? How are you? It's the truth. I say, I'm perfect. And I'll say that rebuke, that arrogance in the name of Jesus. <laughs> But actually, it's the truth. Our spirit is perfect. We just have to catch up with our mind, which we renewing on a daily basis. The fact that our spirits are perfect, and when God looks at us, he sees perfection. Because he doesn't see our sins, he doesn't see our state, he sees Jesus, who we gave our lives to. Therefore, we are all conquering, all victorious, unrelentless, unstoppable, supernatural forces of God. Do you believe that? Because yes. it's the truth. We're like eagles. And I remember for a long time, 18 months, I think I may have said to some people, for 18 months I strived, strived, Lord, I want to become all that you created me to become. I'm going to do everything that you say. I'm going to do, I'm just going to do it. And for 18 months, I went lower and lower, striving. And after 18 months, he, I said to him, Lord, what's going on? And he said, finally, you're going to listen? Now you're going to give me a chance? He says, you are already an evil. You don't have to try and become an evil. You already are. You are, all of you are already evils. You were born evil the day you were reborn. So to become one that soars like this, we just got to know who we are and jump. And that's what we're going to do today, later on. What else does that word verse say? In there also, the eagles, it says, when they fly like eagles, or they soar like eagle, eagles, there's a bit in there missing on this translation, but it says, towards the sun. Eagles, I watched a video where this eagle literally jumped up and, up and down from his perch, but it was always towards the sun. When we fly, when we soar, it's always towards the Son, Jesus, who wants to take us higher. They're master flyers, it says on, it says on there. In fact, they're called ape, apex birds. They're top of the food chain. We're top of the food chain, guys. <laughs> Some of us more than others, maybe. But actually, look at the eagles themselves. They are master flyers. They can fly up to 10,000 feet. Some of them can even get hit by planes. Now, you don't see a chicken getting hit by a plane, do you? If you're 10,000 feet up in the air, you don't look through the window and see a chicken flying by. But those chickens are the exact intrinsicness with curmudgeonly and conniption. They, they go around on the floor, on the ground, and they are, and the words there is noisy, going nowhere fast. So God's giving us a very clear picture, a weird chicken, who's always looking down, always negative, a grumpy old man or a grumpy old woman, thank the Lord, running around in circles, getting nowhere fast. Or are we an eagle that he's called us to be? Amen. 
Amen. And that word there, saw, it's, it's beautiful. So you know, you've heard me say this not that long ago, but they saw. And when they see the storm coming, the chicken, and it'll run off. That's probably the word where we get that phrase, you're a chicken from. And they run off. And they start shouting, bellowing. They're in chaos. They're panic. That's the chicken. But the eagle, you know what he does? When he sees the storm, he sees it from miles off. His sight is incredible. We'll come to that a bit later. But when it sees, it sits on the perch and it waits patiently. Do you know, no an eagle can wait up to an hour. There was a video, it didn't watch the whole hour, but it waited for this rabbit to come out the hole and it waited for an hour. And then when it popped out, he swooped down and picked it up, waiting patiently. He, was, he wasn't wondering when he was going to get fed that day. He was eagerly anticipating the moment when he would get fed that day. Because he knew. He, the word hope there is certainty. When we wait patiently, when we eagerly anticipate God to act in your life, he's going to transfer that weakness that's in you to one of strength so that you can soar. You can soar higher. So when the storm comes, you know that you're an overcomer who's going to take you not only through the storm, but over it. And as it waits patiently, it sees it coming, and it says, I can use this. But it doesn't, it doesn't jump until the thermals, the, the, the wind, is just right. And then it jumps. And, but when it jumps, it doesn't just leave it there. It also flies on the thermals, being guided by them. That word, you know, for thermals is the wind. And the word in Hebrew for the Holy Spirit is ruach, or the wind, or the breath of God. We too should wait until the Holy Spirit says, go. Waiting patiently. When you're waiting for a job, when you're waiting for monies to come in, when you're waiting for the rent money to come in, when you're waiting for a promotion, when you're waiting for a job transfer, when you're waiting for the doctor's report, when you're waiting for the report that you've already had and isn't a very good one, waiting for a good one to come. When you're waiting for your little young ones to come to the Lord Jesus and be saved. When you're waiting for your husband to come to Jesus and be saved. When you're waiting for your wife to come to Jesus and be saved. Wait patiently, eagerly anticipate the storm. And when you do, when you say, when he says jump, don't just leave it there. We, we walk in step with what the Holy Spirit's saying. Where the thermals go, because they're going to take us higher. Expert flyers, this is you. So much more than power, strength, and freedom, isn't it? God's teaching us something. Interesting, you know, in the air is where the eagle's home is. And high in the air, our home too, isn't on the ground, picking up all the garbage and all the, all the bits. Ours is in the air, in the high ground. Interestingly as well, when there are four types of eagles, one of them is uh, called the serpent eagle. And it, it feeds on snakes. And they have a picture of one. Look, one of the, where's the photo of that, Norm? Look the first one there. So, his home is in the heavenlies, high above. That's where we're meant to be. Do you know that, before we went to the next photo, which is the one of the snake, you know, if you got it, is the, the three areas where the eagle is vulnerable is when it's flying low, or when it's on the ground, or in the darkness. But when it's in the air, where it has its full power and authority, it is untouchable. It is all-conquering, unrelentless, unrivaled, unequaled, supernatural force of God. In the darkness, it's vulnerable. And we too, when we walk in darkness, we're vulnerable. 
when we walk in lowly headed, speaking negative, when we're gossiping, when we're spreading bad rumours, when we're looking on the negative side, when we see nothing but ourselves, we're, we're vulnerable. When we're low lying towards the ground, or when we're on the ground, we're vulnerable to attack. But the snake or the serpent, which is also a picture in the Bible of Satan and his kingdom, the eagle doesn't fight the snake on the ground. He takes it up to the heavens. He takes it up to the high, high ground, where he has full power and authority. And the eagle, where they get the name from, is its beak. It'll rip its head off and destroy and destroy it. Or it will drop it to the rocks where it will where it will die. But the snake is completely disorientated. It, it, it loses its power when it's off the ground. If you're if you're struggling, if you're in a battle, in a spiritual battle, take it to the heavenlies, because it's not man-made. Take it to the place where you have power and authority to, take it to the where Jesus is. Amen. Because that's actually where we're seated. You know, a part of you is already resurrected and is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Do you hear that? Do you believe it? A part of us is already resurrected and sitting at the right hand of the Father. And therefore we have his power and authority within us. We need to know that we're this eagle to be able to be invited to jump off that perch. And that snake that we see there becomes disorientated when thrown to the ground. Another thing that it says when it flies in the sun and it soars, I love that word, don't you? Soars. We're meant to soar, Bob. Yeah, you, Bob, you're meant to soar. You are. You're an eagle. And we can soar. But you know, one of the things that it does is always towards the sun. And one of the times it has, a transformation occurs. It's a time of renewal. The eagle will spend a long time in the air and a long time without doing it. But it needs to have new feathers, new plumage. So it gets dirty. So it goes up on a high place and, and lies on a rock and prostrates itself as if dead. Like we heard this morning with Paul Peter in Patmos. Where when he saw God, he lay like as if he was dead. <coughs> and the eagle will prostrate itself on the rock and allow the sun to come upon him. And he will, even though it's painful, he will clean himself. It will be a cleansing time. It will be a time of renewal. It will be a time of self-inspection. It will be a time where the old will be discarded and the new shall come forth. It takes a while, but he's patient because he knows when he comes out of that time, he's exchanged his weakness for strength. What does Romans 12, verse 2 says? Stop! Conforming to this world and the ways of this world and be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Because the battlefield is up here. Our spirits are already perfect. This beautiful body of mind is dying away. But our mind needs renewing to the truth is of what Jesus has done for us and where we already sit. Eternity has already started in us. Who's bouncing? Eternity is already in you. You've already been saved, you're already sealed, and we're already sharing eternity with Jesus. We haven't just experienced the fullness of it yet. We're eternal beings in the heavenlies. And when, they, when this renewing comes forth, they're transformed. So when we self-inspect, when we see what stuff's in us, and we need to come into a place maybe of repentance, then we need to cleanse ourselves. But while that's going on, while we're waiting upon God to do this, we're renewing our strength. We're exchanging our weaknesses for strength, and we shall be even further transformed into his likeness. You think this Bible thing was made up? It's that good. You think you're all matched? 
And there was something, it must be something wrong with it, it's too good, isn't it? Does, the, does it, everything seem to fit? Totally. Because God's word isn't a God of disorder, it's a God of perfection. There's a, there's a, oh, there's a nice one I'll, I might share with you as well, is that actually the eagle has distinctive colours. It is not made to blend in with its surroundings. And its colours make sure of that. So when you've seen them, have a look at them. They stand out, they're contrasting. We're not meant to blend in with the world. We're meant to stand out. And those who are anointed and on fire for God, you will stand out. The more that you allow God to take you on those thermals, you will stand out. Have you ever gone into a room and everyone's left? <laughs> I thought it was a perfume that Debbie bought me, but that, it wasn't that. Some, some people will not want to be with you because of the power of the Holy Spirit running through you, and they don't like to be convicted. Be encouraged. I am. When I walk into the room and people say those things and walk out, I'm encouraged. Because they will come back. And in times of storms in their life, they're going to need someone just like you who's standing and flying for God. They don't want no chicken. They don't want no chicken rustling around in the dirt, right? They want someone who they can rely on, someone who's standing, someone who has a faith, someone who's strong for them, someone who's soaring, someone they can say, I need help, I need you. You're the person they'll come to. When in your families and you think it's split or there's troubles and they may not be talking to you, keep the faith. Keep praying for them. And they will at one day come back to you because they're going to need you. You're going to stand out. Well, one last one there before we move on to the last verse is mating. When the eagle, they're, they're monogamous. What does that mean? <laughs> That's going to do with wood. Uh, one, one love. They mate generally just with one. They find one and they stay with it for life. Do you know the other only other bird that generally does that? Is the dove. Swan. Swan. Him as well. <laughs> but I like the dove one. Because the dove is mentioned 19 times. Oh, it's one, isn't it? 19 times it's mentioned in the Bible. And it's always the Holy Spirit. And the dove is a monogamous bird, apparently too so. But the eagle will pick one. And it will be forever. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And there's like a mating dance that they do. That to, to the male will show off. You know, like, <laughs> give me that, 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 that. Put your best jacket on and everything, but it's my only jacket. <laughs> but they'll have a dance. But then the talons, they will, they will stick to one another. And then they'll free, this is real, they will free fall down to earth. And just before the ground comes, they'll unlock and then fly off together for eternity. Oh. What does that mean for us? And Ross? <laughs> that Jesus himself is our one love. We are virgins unto him. And he chooses, we choose him as he woos us as he broods over us. And when we say yes to him, we free fall forever with him to eternity. These aren't, these aren't made up things. There's lots of made up things. But I've looked at the ornithology, which I thought was going to do with your teeth, but that's kind of all for dentistry. <laughs> but ornithology, and then look at the truths that God gives us. It's beautiful, isn't it? But the, the, the final verse I want to give us is Deuteronomy 32, 11. And I've talked about a time of the renewal. And I've talked about a time of flying high and soaring. But it's also, the habitat is high. And it makes their nests in high places. Guys, your home is on high ground. Interestingly as well, 
their nests, which we'll come to in a minute, their nests can be next to waters. One of the four types is, is water eagles or sea eagles. And they live next to waters where the fish will be because they're master fishers too. Master fishermen too. Or master fishers of men, I like you could call them. But these, these eagles that live there, they, they will go next to waters where there's life because they feed on fresh food. And most eagles feed on fresh food. Just like we have fresh food called his word, which is available to us every day. In fact, not available to us, he gives you a piece of fresh food every day. A piece of manna, fresh for you to survive on and live on, so that you can soar every day. But these, these water birds, these water eagles, they will, they will nest next to them. But you know, in the Bible, when it mentions that there's a stream, or a river, or water flowing, it's actually called streams of living water. Did you get that? Yeah. So whenever the Bible talks of, you'll see it there, rivers in the Bible, which have life in them, they're actually called streams of living waters. What did Jesus declare he was? Stream, come to me. Streams of living water will be unto you. So we as eagles should be near the streams of living waters. We should be close to Jesus. In fact, in all these things you've heard with Christiana talking of our gifts, of our talents, they are renewed and strengthened when we're close to Jesus. When we're taking the battles to him in the heavenlies. When we're praying, when we're prayerful, when we're worshipping. But our life should be a time of worship, not just a sing-song, but our life should be. And this nest in, in Deuteronomy, yeah, there we go. Isn't it beautiful? And it will swoop. It's the king of the air. But in this Deuteronomy 32, verse 11 verse, it says in there that these nests, it's talking about the nests. And I want to pick out two words. And one of them, is it on there now? Shall I read it out? You got it? It says there, as an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. The words used in ornithology to describe the eagle of how it nests is one of care, one of love, one of attentiveness, watchfulness, and encouragement. And, as, and God describes himself as his eagle over you. You are in his nest. And he has care for you, Derma. He has love for you, Anne. Steve, he has fully attentiveness. His whole care is over you. In fact, I was reminded this morning, Psalm 121, was it Jonathan? That actually, it's a beautiful verse is where it's God and how he cares for every moment. He watches over us 24 hours a day. Even though we sleep, he never sleeps. He's continuously by his wings covering us with his protection, with his protective care and love, always watchful so that we will not falter. But the words there, fluttereth, means to incite, to encourage, or to awaken. God wants to awaken us to grow up. Because what it tends to do, the eagle, is he doesn't push him out of the nest, which, which uh, is a little bit pushing the, uh, the boundaries. But when you read it, what they do is they, they coax and encourage the, the young ones to they sit up in the nest so the thermals will lift them up. And as they lift them up, that happens. And they do it a bit more. And that happens. And eventually then they fly a little bit. And some of them will die if they get the wrong, the wrong timing. But the eagle, the parent, who's always watching, is there encouraging them so that they will become grown up. So they will become mature. They train them 
in growing up. We're called to be trained. We're called to give the gospel of good news, but we're called to be disciples. We are meant to be disciples. We're meant to be trained so that we will grow up. It may be, it may be for you inconvenient to go to a group where you're going to learn the word of God. It may not be your night. It may not be appropriate for you. It may not be the, the way that you like it done. Grow up. So that you can grow up. Fluttereth. So he encourages, coaxes us. The other word in there, besides fluttereth, is, sorry, stirreth, is fluttereth. Stirreth and fluttereth. What does fluttereth mean? It means he broods over us. It means to hover. God hovers over us. Do you know in the beginning it says, Genesis 1, 2, it says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, doesn't it? No. But the earth was formless and empty. But darkness was over the deep. But the Spirit of God was over the surface of the waters. And that word there was his hovering. God was, by the Holy Spirit, was hovering over his creation. It's the same word here. He hovers over you. He broods over you. He's watchful, careful, watching every step that you do, guiding you. Isn't that great news? Because we need guidance, don't we? Christiana, we need guidance. Lena, don't we need guidance? We need to know that when these times ahead of us are coming, that God is fluttering and stirring us so that we will become all he's created us to become. So we have a choice. So those three words that we were given by the world, freedom, power, and strength, look at the words that God's given us today. Freedom, we have power, we have strength, we have a hope, we have a certainty, we are overcomers, we are more than conquerors. We can rise high towards the sun as we wait patiently with trust and faith. We can renew our minds, being transformed on a daily basis. Not in our strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. God says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. We have power and authority. We are number one warriors. We can be all seeing, Holy Spirit eyes. We're given fresh food, given wisdom and discernment. We're going to stand out. We're master flyers. We have eternity with Jesus. We're not going to be on the ground running around. We're going to live him in the heavenlies, in the high places where our home is. We're going to be near streams of living waters where he cares for us, attentive to us, watchful to us, knowing that our Father is always seeing us and he's going to awaken us up so that we can grow up. Always close, always protective, always caring, always loving, always on our side. Do you want to be a chicken? Because on a daily basis we have a choice, do we want to be a chicken or do we want to be an eagle? This is no one time I want to be an eagle. We have to continually remind ourselves and in every day, in every choice, decide whether you're going to be a chicken or going to be an eagle. So I want us just to lower our heads for one moment. And I want you to stay, stay seated unless this God is telling you to jump off this perch and do something. So with our heads low so that no one else is watching, if, you, if you're not an eagle, if you haven't given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, then raise your hands. If anyone hasn't committed themselves to God and you want to, I'm going to pray over you or at the end in the prayer ministry teams so that you can receive Jesus in your life today so that you can know that God who is with you is with you for eternity. You are mates. You are as in, as in one love for eternity. And 
If you want the incentive, the encouragement to be strengthened, to become an eagle, then I want you to raise your hands too. This is a commitment not to say I was a one-off, but to say to God every day with every choice, it's either to feed the chicken or to feed the eagle. Whichever one you feed will grow. Whichever one you don't will die. So if that's you, I want, us to, I want you to raise your hands too. And I want us to, you to jump off the perch and say, Lord Jesus, I want to fly like the eagle. I want to do that on a daily basis. I want my home to be in the heavenly realms. I want to not be on lower ground where I'm vulnerable. Not to be in darkness where I'm vulnerable. Not to be, not to be actually on the ground where I'm vulnerable. But I want, us, I want us to fly. So I'm going to feed the eagle. Because I'm already an eagle. I'm not having to become one. You made me one the day I said yes to you. And for all those hands that are up, I'm going to pray over the first one who's put their hand up and all those who are putting their hands up now. Because God is speaking. And when God speaks and you say amen to him, the double-edged sword says yes. Father, I want to thank you for these people who have said yes to you today. Thank you, Jesus, that they've said yes to becoming part of your family today. And I pray, Lord, that not in their own strength, but that you fill them right now, the ones who have said yes to Jesus this morning, that you fill them with your Holy Spirit. Help them to know that you died on the cross for them. You took away their sin. You washed them completely clean. And they now have a new life in you to serve you. And for those who are already given their lives to God through his son Jesus, who have their hands still raised, if you if you hear me words, these are for you. If your hands are raised, this is for you. That Father, you want them to know that first of all that you have them. They're in your nest. They are already eagles for you. Help them, Lord, to jump off when the thermals come, when the Holy Spirit says jump, to jump into the air and trust and faith is placed into you. They, can, they have no control only by the power of the Holy Spirit, those thermals, which take them to higher places. Fill them with the breath of your Holy Spirit, I pray right now, so that they soar, soar. Say, say it to yourself. Say you soar like eagles for you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 So we're going to play... We're just going to play this song. Can we stand? And we're going, to, we're going to declare that. We can have... Let's have an encouragement to one another of what's just happened.